Johnny's got a word today, and uh, it's, it's his, not only his time to share, but more importantly, he's got a word and he's excited. I don't know if you saw him beating on the drums, but I was like, is he hurting him? Because he was beating on him so hard today, but that's because he's excited about what's inside of him, and I know he wants to get it out. Amen? <laughs> All right. So we're going to let Pastor Johnny do his thing, and uh, do it, bring it, don't hold back. All right. Okay? Just another set of drums. All right. <laughs> So how's everybody tonight? Good, right? Woo! Glory to God. Um, I guess, first off, let me, I guess for someone that, for people that maybe are not aware, let me give you a little history about um, Jesse and I, Pastor Jesse, um, how we met, just so we, just so, just so everybody can know, why not? Um, we actually met when, uh, back in the year 2000, we used to work in... Um, at Cardin Healthcare, and uh, he was a field rep back then, and I was actually a team lead. And I remember the first time that I met him, I was like, "This guy's a slacker." <laughs> and then later on, he thought I was a slacker. Anyway, the first time I met him, uh, I remember uh, I was working, going over some reports. Uh, I had more responsibility. He was. A field rep, basically, those guys would just drive around the city and, you know, collect, collect mileage checks. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, and I remember one of the first things he told me after the fact, uh, when, once we actually started getting to know each other about a year later, he, he said he thought, I was, uh, he thought I was stuck up because I wouldn't talk to him. And I told him, well, the reason I wouldn't talk to you was because, uh, you know, I had more responsibility. I wouldn't just drive around like you guys. Anyway, so we worked together, and we got to know each other a little bit, and uh, we worked there for about, I don't know, about a year and a half, and then he disappeared. He went to another place, and um, I stayed working there for about another year and a half, so I was there, and then um, I ended up walking out of that job, and uh, I was looking for another job, and it just so happened I answered an ad to the paper, and um, I got called in for an interview, and I hadn't seen him in about a year and a half. And I got called in for an interview, and then when I went to go meet him, he told me his name, but I didn't think it was him when I talked to him on the phone. I went to go meet him, and it was like, whoa, hey, it's you. What are you doing? It's like, so we kind of caught up again, and we worked there for about another two years, and then he left again. It's like this guy was just, he would come into my life and then leave again. So it's like, okay. And I got to know him a little more the second time around, and I remember what, what I liked about him when we would always... Um, we would have our breaks. We would take our 15-minute breaks twice a day, and he would talk to uh, the other guys there. And I would just kind of be there listening. And I remember one conversation he, would, he had with uh, one of the gentlemen there, and he talked about, um, they were talking about the Bible, of course. And he says, the other guy says, well, I don't really believe the Bible because uh, I don't know if he remembers this conversation, but I was there listening. And he says, I don't know if I believe the Bible because... Um, the Bible is just full of stories. You know, it could be just like today. Today, people write fairy tales and all kinds of stories. And, I mean, how do you know that it wasn't really put into, you know, just fairy tales put into a book? There's no proof. And then, you know, of course, Pastor would say his, his side of the, of the Bible. And, you know, I would always be like, well, I wouldn't say much. I'd just listen. I'd be like, well, I heard both parts. And... I already knew some, some Christianity because I grew up in, uh, as a Christian, as a child. And it's like, well, I told the other guy, well, I'm going to go with this, with, with, with Jesse. We wouldn't call him Pastor Jesse. He was just Jesse then. And it's like, I'm going to go with Jesse on this one because, you know, that's what I believe. So it was kind of two on one. We kind of ganged up on him, but he wouldn't change his mind. And then um, he ended up leaving that job. And then I think I got a letter in the mail or something saying he opened up a church. And that was it. I didn't hear from him for about two years. I, didn't, I, didn't, I hadn't heard anything from him anymore. I never visited his church. So, <laughs> so then um, we ended up, I uh, actually went and applied at another place at, at, at a hospital. And they told me the name and they said again, Jesse Hernandez. Again, I didn't think anything of it. You know, there's, there's a lot of Jesse Hernandez. So we'd been working there for about three weeks. He was working the night shift the graveyard and I was working the day shift and then they called a mandatory meeting 
And on that meeting, that's when we actually met up. And I said, hey, it's you. And he's like, hey. And again, the third time. And uh, it's like, golly, this guy I can't shake this guy. He just, everywhere I go, he's just, <laughs> we're working in the same place. <laughs> I guess we, we didn't learn our lesson. We, we wouldn't leave that, that type of business. We were, always, we were in the same type of business. I guess that's why. And um, then we got to know each other really well. And he really, we really, since we were both in management at that time, we, were, we really got, got, got to know each other really well as far as uh, we had lunches and everything. And I opened up to him a lot. And uh, he spoke to me a lot about the word. And, you know, we, we, we used to have lunch every day, extended lunches. And um, eventually, he ended up, by giving me God's word, he ended up talking me into marrying my wife. So, uh, you know, he just kept, he, I, I, was, I was like in denial. No, I don't, I, I'm not there. I'm not, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And uh, eventually, you know, he just kept on telling me, you know, you're going to be blessed. And, you know, your marriage is going gonna, is gonna to be, you know, blessed by God. And you'll be living better. And at first, I was like, well, no, no, no. I didn't want to. And I was like. And then eventually it just, one day it just, like, the light bulb turned on. And I asked her to marry me, and then we ended up getting married. And um, after that, then I left. And I think that was it. After that, I left. And, and because of that relationship the third time where we actually really got to know each other, that's when I started visiting the church. And uh, it took, you know, what, nine, ten years, I guess, before I finally fully committed to the church. But uh, it's, it's a good story, and I, I, I appreciate uh, Pastor Jesse for putting all that time into it, into me, actually. So uh, glory to God. Well, that's just a little, uh, I just wanted to share that for people that just may be wondering, who is this guy up here? He says he's a pastor. And <laughs> so anyway, um, let me go ahead and uh, I want to open up in prayer. Before I uh, start, the, start the word, <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for bringing us here together, Lord, and um, I just pray, Lord, that you uh, anoint me as I give this word, and I ask you, Lord, just to, just to lead me as I uh, share the word, and I ask you, Lord, that you open up the hearts of everyone here and everyone that's in the live stream uh, watching. I ask you, Lord, that you speak to them. Um, you know, Lord, who it is that has to hear this word tonight. And I just pray, Lord, that you soften their hearts, that there be no animosity towards this word, your word, that you uh, gave me to share with everyone tonight. I speak blessings over it and blessings over everyone here. In the name of Jesus, amen. So... <clears throat> We go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 13, uh, chapter 13, verse 3 through 9. We're going to go ahead and go ahead and start reading that if you guys have your Bible or if you don't, I believe pastor's going to put it up here. Can I get an amen when everybody's ready? If you got your Bible. Okay, so we. Go ahead and start reading here, Matthew 13, chapter, chapter 13, verse 3 to 9. And it reads, I'm reading NIV, by the way. I don't know if it's different back here. But uh, NIV reads, this is, uh, Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came, came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Let them hear. That's one of the, the one that I, I went ahead and added verse 9 on there because that's kind of a point that I, well, I'm going to go back to later. But it says, let them hear. And to me, it says uh, basically spread the gospel no matter what. 
and God will call them on his, on his own timing. So it's just let them hear. Anybody who has ears, whoever has ears, let them hear. Now, moving forward in the chapter, Jesus gives us an explanation of what this parable actually means and what each planted seed represents. We look at Matthew 13, chapter 13, verse 9. And uh, can I get an amen when you guys are there? All right. I'm sorry, not 9. I'm sorry, 13, 19. I don't know if I said 9 or 19. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one, we all know who the evil one is, comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is a seed sown along the path. So I want to give, uh, I guess, an interpretation of this. And this to me represents a person that likes to hear about the word of God and is intrigued by it, but lacks the understanding and maturity to dig deeper into the word. Now, how many of us have come across that type of person? I mean, just in your daily lives, you, you, you walk around, you talk to people and you kind of see a little bit about, you know, they, they want to know the word, but, and they ask questions, they want to hear about the word, but they lack any type of commitment as far as when it, when it comes to actually you know, coming to church and really being committed. And as the scripture states, the evil one comes and snatches it away before it, be it could become anything significant for the kingdom. Now, to me, these are probably the Christians that come to church on special events, maybe like on Christmas and Easter and so forth. You kind of you see them here and there. No true commitment, but they still call themselves Christians when they're out in public. I mean, I'm sure everyone at some point has run across someone like that, right? Amen. So now we move on to uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 20 and 21. And I'm basically going to give a breakdown of what, what Jesus was talking about when he talked on, on Matthew 13, 3 through 9. Just so you know where I'm going with this. <clears throat> 13, 20, 21. Everyone there? Amen. Now, the seed falling on rocky grounds refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Now, that scripture is pretty cut and dry on the explanation. To me, it represents a large number of Christians also in the world today. And uh, many Christians come to church they hear the word, they love the worship, they pay the tithes, and they are committed as long as things are going good in their lives. You know, they're, they're, they're praising God everywhere, and, and you see them everywhere, and they look really strong um, as far as living their Christian life, they're going, going through everything. As long as things are perfect, you know, there's no storms, there's no problem. But the moment that they hit that first storm, they begin to fall away. They begin to question God and ask why. And you start seeing less of them at church. They begin to harden their hearts because of the lack of the deep root. You try to reach out to them and they simply turn the other way because they're just not in the mood. You know, they, they, they've, been, um, they've been broken. And, and that's because of the lack of the, of the deep root. Now, being this type of Christian can also get you into a vicious cycle where one moment you're up and praising God while life is good. And the next moment you're cursing God while life is bad. So then things start looking up, and then there you go. You're back at church praising God and everything, and then, again, you're just in that cycle. And that's, that's a, to me, that's, that's a bad place to be if you're, not, if you're not deeply rooted. In walking with God, we must be deeply rooted to avoid being pulled away from the kingdom the moment a trial comes our way. Amen? <clears throat> now let's look at Matthew 13, chapter 13. Verse 22, now the seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. Now looking at this scripture to me also represents a Christian that knows God's word, but doesn't live by the word. This one's a little more, to me, it's a little more, he's a Christian that's possibly like, he's a little better than the other guy but he's still not at the level where God wants him to be. 
An example of this would be someone who comes to church on a regular basis also, praises God, worships God, and is one way while at church, but maybe come Monday, Tuesday morning, you see them acting the same way that a non-Christian would act, participating in dirty jokes, cursing, and making ungodly decisions. They still just kind of go through the motions. Life overwhelms this type of person or Christian, and they lack that one-on-one -on -one relationship to be able to make the right choices, the Holy Spirit type choices. They are making life decisions on feeling, not, not by faith in God's wisdom. Kind of like Pastor always says, you, you, you have to live by faith, not by feeling. Amen? Amen. So we've seen the three examples of how, basically how not to be seated when talking about the kingdom of God. Now we look at Matthew 13, chapter 13, verse 23. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. Now who wants to be this kind of cedar or seed? <laughs> is, that the right, is that the right way? Cedar, sower? Sower, sower there you go, cedar. <laughs> this is the seed that God intended us all to be. And this is the Christian that walks the walk and talks the talk. Amen. <clears throat> this is the one that no matter what life th throws at him or her, they simply look at God's word and says, my God is greater than anything this, this world can toss my way. This, this Christian basically prays on a regular basis, reads God's word, shares the word, lives by the word, and lets God be in total control of his or her life. Amen? Amen. Now that's what we want to be, right? Yes. Come on, like Pastor says, come on. <laughs> So we look at, um, now going back, like I said, going back to Matthew 13, 9. And it's, it's, a real, it's a real short verse. And it says, whoever has ears, let them hear. And the Lord says, let them hear. I read this scripture again because we shouldn't judge people on what level of Christian they are. If we are the good sower spreading the gospel and showing fruit for the kingdom, then we must also be able to know and understand that no matter where our brothers and sisters stand in Christ, them showing up to church shows that they have some sort of hunger, a desire to try and become a seed-sowing Christian one day too, a fruitful Christian. It just means that we must all, and that's, I, I stress all, because we, we were all in the same boat, that we should all work a little harder to let God's, God's light shine through us in our daily walk. To make them, when I say them, I sp I'm speaking of the world, the world see a difference and want to know how, how, how is it that we can handle this life without being afraid. Amen? Amen. And um, I added this scripture kind of late, so I don't think it's going to be on top. Sorry, Pastor. <laughs> so it's Matthew 7.7. 7. And, it's, and it reads, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Now, reading that scripture, that, that basically, to me, kind of coincides with Matthew 13, 9, where it says, Whoever has ears, let them hear. So, when you combine those two scriptures together, and you get that type of commitment, the commitment that, that God wants then that's exactly where, where you want to be. And then at that point, that's, that's when you'll be able to fulfill that scripture or get that, that scripture fulfilled like Jesus, like Jesus said here. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Amen? Amen. <sighs> well, I guess that's all my word. It's kind of short. Um, I do want to share one more thing. It's kind of, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't go with the sermon, but um, I do want to share something that I read. And um, I heard it on the radio, so obviously I looked it up. And it kind of describes a, a Christian. And when I heard it, I was like, yep, that's totally being Christian. And uh, the name of this is called uh, 
A Christian is an odd number anyway. Has anyone heard that one before? It's like a, it's like a, I don't know if it's a poem or something. It's uh, written by A.W. Tozer. And uh, let me go ahead and read it. And this, this to me is uh, 100% what a Christian to me is uh, just basically 100% Christian right here. A real Christian is an odd number anyway, it reads. He feels supreme love for one who he has never seen. Talks familiarly every day to someone he cannot see. Expects to go to heaven on the virtue of another. Empties himself in order to be full. Admits he is wrong so he can be declared right. Goes down in order to get up. Is strongest when he is weakest. Richest when he is poorest and happiest when he feels the worst. He dies so he can live forsakes in order to have, gives away so he can keep, sees the invisible, hears the inaudible, and knows that which passeth knowledge. Amen. That, when I, when I heard that, I was like, I got to share that. I don't know if anybody's heard it, but I was like, I got to share that because that's right there, 100% Christian. And that right there basically goes with that Matthew 13 23 that just it just goes perfect right there hand in hand uh, as to what what God intends us to to be our, our life to be so um, I just want to close in prayer and then I'm going to hand it over to Pastor Jesse <clears throat> Lord again I thank you for bringing us here tonight and I just pray Lord that um, this word that was uh, spoken tonight, that it touches someone's heart. You know, Lord, who it is that's lacking commitment. You know who it is that needs that change. And I just pray, Lord, that you soften their hearts and that they do, that everyone here, including myself, continue to move forward towards that chapter of uh, Matthew thirteen twenty three, to be able to understand and to know what it is it ta- what what it takes to produce that that crop to be fruitful for God's kingdom. And I just pray, Lord, blessings over everyone here. In Jesus' name, I pray this. Amen. Thank you guys for allowing me to share the word. You know, I, I've, Johnny's straight and to the point, and I'm long-winded, so... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a little bit here. Uh, I believe that in the day we live, first of all, this word is dead on for the timing, Pastor Johnny. Uh, I believe that for the time that we're living in, that we need to learn how to be master sowers. Um, because what happens is, I, last night I was up late, I was having a Sid Roth marathon. I was catching up, uh, Sid Roth has a show called It's Supernatural. I record it, and then I watch it, and I was watching all kinds of things, and I just want to give you an idea of what I was watching. On one of them, it was a young man that struggled with uh, pornography and all kinds of things, and and, uh, he struggled with that Uh, growing up, going to Bible college, he struggled with it, and then after Bible college and seminary school is when he actually got delivered. God showed him how to get delivered from it. But he was giving some staggering statistics. He was giving statistics that uh, 50% of the men in church say they're addicted to pornography. More shocking, 54% of pastors say that they also are participating in pornography. And so immediately you start saying sowing. You know, what are we sowing? Because what the, what the young man was saying was, quite honestly, how can you expect to be blessed if that's what you're dealing with? And God gave him the answer on how to be delivered from it. And I'm going to give you that answer, not just because some of you may be struggling with it, but more importantly, some of you may be struggling with something else that's over the years you haven't gotten victory over it. See, the word of God says that you confess your sins to your father and he forgives you, right? That's what it says. But it also says that you confess your sins to one another and then you can be healed of it. And if we, now, I'm going to be honest with you. How many really feel comfortable enough to go and confess your sins to one another? That's what I thought. There's a couple. Good. Couple. Most people don't feel comfortable that way. You want to know why? Because there's no relationship in church. It's I'll see you on Thursdays. I'll see you on Sundays. And there's no relationship outside of church. 
And, and if I tell you that I'm struggling with this, then you're going to think less of me. And if you tell me, I'm going to think less of you. But the Bible makes it real clear. God forgives you of your sin, but to go through the healing, you have to be accountable to one another. Now, why am I sharing that? Because another, another show showed a pastor, and this is the vision he had. He was actually recording a commercial. He was in the Holy Land, and God took him on a vision. Now, if you don't listen to anything tonight, listen to this. Because what he did was God showed him Hitler. God showed him all these different, uh, the history of man, Roman, you know, Mongolian, you know, uh, Genghis Khan, all these different people. And then he also showed him ministries. And some ministries that man not only recognized, but knew them. And in both instances, both with Hitler, right alongside ministries, they all were burnt up in the fire. All of them burnt up in the fire. And he says, and the ministries weren't burnt up because the guy fell into sin. The ministry had great things that had been accomplished. But the ministry got burnt up in the same fire that Hitler and all his works got. You want to know why? Because that ministry was no longer doing what God had asked them to do. They were doing what they felt God wanted them to do. They, they were no longer doing and being led by the Spirit. They were doing what they thought was good and righteous and upright. Now, I'm reminded of the book of Matthew that says, But Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? And he says, Get away from me. I never knew you. Now, why is that so important? Why is it? Because some of you in your lives and even myself in my own life have done things that we feel God would want us to do, but God never told us to do it. Now, why is this important? Because I don't know about you, but when I stand before God, I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. I don't want to see everything that I've attempted to do for him burned up in the flames. You want to know why he burns that up? Say, well, that's kind of mean. Why would he burn up if it's a good thing? What, orphanages. Why, why would he burn up, but, you know, the church works if they did with orphanages and, and they fed the poor? And they, because it wasn't his idea. And he won't share his glory with any man. See, this man was talking about that we have to be led of the Lord. Now, why am I sharing this? Because I go back to the seed now. It said that the seed that was thrown on the rocky ground was scorched and was burned. You want to know what happened in those nine years, Johnny? God was using me as a plow on your heart because you had a rocky heart. You had hardened your heart towards marriage. And that's all that happened. He used me as a plow and, and it was chip, 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 dig, dig, chip, 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 dig, dig. As little as you would let me do it over the years so that it wasn't too painful for you. But then all I did was plant the seed and he watered it. And now you're up here preaching. You see, our job is to plant seed. It's to sow. But I can't go and sow into the homeless because I think that's a good idea. I have to do it because fathers told me to do it. I can't go and, and, and sow even in an orphanage. Now, how many know an orphanage is a great thing to do? But if father has not called me to an orphanage, then I can't do it because it's all going to be burned up in the end. Church, we're living in a day where there is fertile ground to plant some seed. But Father has not called us to plant all of our seed in the same hole. We've got to plant it where he tells us to plant it. What did he tell Ezekiel? Can these dry bones live? That wasn't a place where he thought he'd sow any seed, was it? Will these dry bones live? Uh, I don't know. If you say they live, they're going to live. He says, well, speak to them. Sow seed into them. And it raised up an army. Church, I don't know if you understand what was shared with you tonight. But some of you are just kind of spreading out seed and saying, well, well whatever takes root is going to take root. That's not what God has called you to do. He's called you to till the soil of the heart. He's called you to plant the seed so that he can bring the rain. And unless you do that, unless you're led by the Spirit... It's all going to burn up in the end anyway. 
Well, I went to church every Sunday. Great. It's all, all your works are going to be burned up. What does it say? Not by works that any should boast. He won't share his glory with anybody. It's not by works. I don't care. Now, well, you're a pastor. Well, you know what? There's pastors probably going to hell. What? Yeah. There's leaders in the church. He said, get away from me. I never knew you. And they claim to have healed the sick, cast out devils, and speak in other tongues. If it's not his leading, it's not eternal. See, why is that so important? Because you and I need to look at our lives, guys. We need to look at our lives and say, what are we doing that is eternal in value? You know what happens to a person that's on their last days? They look back at their lives and they see what they would change. Does that make sense? Why do we have to wait to do that? Why can't we make a choice today, right now, that we will be led by the Spirit and only do the things that have eternal value? Houses, cars, all that passes away. Your job passes away. Somebody else will do it when you're no longer there. Only heaven is eternal. Only God is eternal. Some of you he's called to go to the multitudes. Some of you he's called to go to the homeless. Some of you he's called to go to the orphanages. Some of you he's called to go to just different places, the streets. He's called you to go. But you've got to follow the leading of the Spirit. Not, I think this would be a good idea. Because that's not God. That's you. Amen. Would you stand to your feet, please? Hallelujah. Some of you ask, well, how do you get led of the Spirit? Okay, I'm going to tell you how. You listen. Um, how do you listen? Okay, let me make it easy. Um, if you're a mother or a father, once your baby has cried a few hundred times, you learn the cry of your baby, don't you? I mean, if the baby is in a room with a hundred other babies and they're the ones crying, you're going to know that's my baby crying because you learn the voice through repetition. Does that make sense? How do, how do, I, how do I hear Father's voice? You learn through repetition. But the problem is, if you're not putting yourself in a place to listen, then you're not getting any repetitions in. If you don't have any quiet time, you don't have any time to get repetition in. If you don't, oh, by the way, when you pray, if you pray 10 minutes a day, I hope it's longer, but if it's 10 minutes a day, you need to give him 10 minutes to speak to you. Because then all you're doing is using him as a dumping ground. Father, here's my problems, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I feel better. Thank you. And we walk away and we call that prayer. That's not prayer. That's a dumping ground. We're dumping on him. If you pray for 10 minutes, you need to give him 10 minutes to talk back because I guarantee you he's talking. You should be in prayer with something to write with, quite honestly, because I guarantee you he'll give you a vision. But that's how you hear the word. Now, how many of you would like to hear Father clearer? You'd like to hear, okay, then come up to this altar just for a little bit because we're going to pray. I really feel this is, listen, if, if, if San Antonio is talking about removing Christians from leadership, then the only way Christians are going to be heard is through the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. Okay? The empowerment of the Holy Ghost. That's the only way. In other words, we're going to have to be empowered through the Holy Ghost to do the supernatural. Why is that important? Because they're not going to listen to us otherwise. Okay? They're not going to listen to us otherwise. They're not going to listen to us unless they see God all over us. Amen? So, Father, we come before you, Lord, and, and we just pray, Father, that the seeds would be sown right now 
in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, open our ears that we would hear your voice. Open our hearts that we would desire to hear you in the first place. Holy Spirit, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Minister. We release you. Minister, oh God. And I just see things falling off your ears right now. Let them fall off, Lord. Let them fall off in the name of Jesus. Some of you, the Lord says that it feels like my voice has been far away. The Lord's telling me it's going to sound like I'm yelling because I've removed the wax in your ears. He says, but don't, don't get startled. Don't tell me to get away. He says, I'm, I'll talk to you. I'll whisper to you. I release dreams and visions. I release a desire and a hunger for prayer. I release the Holy Spirit upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Just receive it right now in the name of Jesus. By the power of the resurrection, receive your healing. Receive your miracle. Receive a deeper anointing from the Holy Spirit. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Some of you need to stop listening to the things you're listening to. That's what I feel very strongly in my spirit. The Lord is saying that some of you need to stop listening to some of this music you're listening to, some of the jokes at work you're listening to, some of the conversations you're having with your friends that you're listening to. And when he says listening, it means you're participating in that conversation. He's saying if you could see what it puts in your ears, if you could see the junk that it puts in your ears, you would no longer listen to it. He says, because all it does is it builds up, it infects, and it builds up a blockage so that you can't hear mine. He says, because my voice is completely different from the world's voice. The world's voice is loud and obnoxious and, and overwhelming. He says, and mine is a still small voice. And I, I, I don't know how to explain what I see dropping out of your ears right now, but they look like maggots. Just being honest with you. They, it looks like maggots. It looks like, you know, some slimy things coming out of your ears. You say, well, what's that? All? That is the worldly stuff that you allow in your ears. And he's removed them so that you can hear them. But like Pastor Johnny said, if you just go back to your music and go back to all the things you do and say, oh, there's grace. Oh, there's grace. Oh, there is grace. You're absolutely right. There is grace. But I really, really feel that the Lord is calling us to a holiness. Not a holiness is in works, but a holiness is that I'm going to do what he's asked me to do. I'm going to set myself apart. I am going to be that odd number like A.W. Tozer said. That's what he's asking for. So, Father, we thank you for the cleaning. We thank you for the purging. And we thank you, Lord, that we're going to hear your voice. Hallelujah. I just feel like we're going to have a lot of testimonies of people saying, the Lord showed me something. I release testimonies, Father. Testimonies, God. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Amen, Nicholas. Let's let's pray uh, so I can.